All right, follow up to that regarding our Hispanic community. So overall, I think the consensus from our party is that the Hispanic values, the belief system, much more in line with the Republican Party than the Democratic Party. You alluded to that earlier. Mm -hmm. So how do you view our current efforts, current RPT efforts to target Hispanics and to bring more over to our I side? I think, again, we need to have better policy inclusiveness. We need to have better engagement. You look at the Rio Grande Valley. It's very simple, folks. You look at a county-to-county -county breakdown map of Texas, you can see where the Democrats believe mm -hmm. they're strongest. All the major urban population centers, and then you look down there along the Rio Grande Valley, and you see all the blue. You know, I've been down to Del Rio, I've been down to Eagle Pass, I've been down to McAllen, I've walked along the border, I stood at the Rio Grande River. These people want us to secure the border. They don't want to live in, live in fear and, and be terrorized by the drug elements and the cartels and the gangs that are coming across our border. But if we're not showing up there to show that, hey, we're here, Let, let's lock arms. Let's talk about how we can help you to run and win these city council races, win these school board races. We gotta build them up. We have to build up a farm team in these communities. Remember what I said, you gotta keep the ground fertile, first and foremost, before you think you can just go down there and plant seeds. So they are looking for our voice. And, and I've told you know the Hispanic community that all you have to do is look at what the Democrats did to the black community. That's right. Since the Great Society programs with Lyndon Baines Johnson in 1965, look what happened. They decimated the family. Since Roe v. Wade, we have murdered 20 million black babies in the womb. I mean, the, 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 the dearth of quality education, the gangs, the violence, everything. And they're gonna do that to the Hispanic community because they're looking for the next electorate that they can have as victims. Yeah. But if we just tell people it doesn't have to be that way. You know, I always tell folks what's the difference between Republicans and Democrats or conservatives and, and the left. We make victors. No. They make victors. Right. Kid like me, how I got started, they would still have me back there in the old Fourth Ward neighborhood hmm. where I don't have any friends because they're all dead. But because I had solid, stable parents that raised me with conservative principles and values. They understood the quality of a good education. They didn't send me to the failing public school. They sent me to a small black Catholic school. I still have the scars on my knuckles from those nuns. <laughs> but that set me on the right path. And that's what we must do. Uh, think about the faces of those folks on the other side of the aisle doing the last State of the Union address. When a hundred-year-old Tuskegee Airman was recognized. When that young girl got an opportunity scholarship. We need to show people that we are not going to relegate them to another generational aspect of victimization. Black, Hispanic, or otherwise. Well, first of all, people downplay the fact, you know, the press loves to downplay the fact that in quite a few elections, Republicans in Texas have won a plurality, and there was one, there are a couple of cases where we actually won a majority of the Hispanic vote in Texas. So uh, every time a reporter or a Democrat or both comes to me and says, you know, isn't demograph demography going to spell the end of the Republican Party of Texas? You know, I, I push back heavily on that racist baseless claim. And the reality is that it is both racist and baseless. But the things we have done have included being really intentional as we recruited staff. We already have more staff than we had the last two elections combined. A majority of our staff is female minority or both, and a full third of our staff is bilingual. We have uh, Bianca D. Garcia. She is fantastic. She is our head of engagement. Uh, she has done, she came from the Valley. She's got uh, assistants and deputies who work for her, who are working in the Valley in South Texas and each of the major metro areas. Uh, she is doing a bang up job in making sure we spread our message. When we did our biggest ever candidate recruiting effort last year, we had over 1400 candidates, campaign workers, pay to attend a one day intensive campaign training school. And that was part of the the group of candidates we had, uh, Democrats only put up 1,401 candidates in the last primary. We did 3,106. 
And a big part of that was the most diverse candidate pool we've ever put up. And that's because we were really intentional about recruiting to challenge incumbent Democrats. I notice I didn't say we were, we were intentional about setting up a quota. It was not about that. It's about being welcoming and encouraging and saying, yes, even in this neighborhood, we, the Republicans, are going to show up and we are going to support and we are going to run and we're going to spread our message because our message is best, our policies are best. President Trump is showing that right now. And our results are showing that right now. We've got the lowest Hispanic unemployment ever, the lowest black unemployment ever. We've got the best female employment since the end of World War II. Republican policies lead to a better life for all, and it's just our job to communicate that. And with the increased staff, the increased candidates, the increased volunteers, the new registrations, through all of those initiatives, we are doing exactly that.